Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story. It is May the 14th, day 134. Psalm 51 is going to be our reading today. It's what we're going to talk about. So this psalm uh, is a psalm of David regarding the time that Nathan the prophet confronting him, confronted him about Bathsheba. So I'm going to read a few of the verses and we're going to jump into a conversation. It says, Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me for my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. So verse 4 says, against you and you alone have I sinned. What do you think he means by sinning only against God? And are you good with that? <laughs> I disagree that he had only sinned against God. Because he had taken a man's life. He had taken his He'd wife. He took his wife first. He took his wife yeah. first. And then um, he had him killed on the battlefield. And I... I'm not sure why he saw it that way, but I, I don't agree that he was the only person who had been sinned against. Yeah, I think he's saying, this is my, my interpretation of it, I think he's saying against you primarily. Uh, that's where it started because he connects that with a prior verse, I recognize my rebellion, it haunts me day and night. That, that against you in, in that rebellion and that, that desire uh, that I made choices and decisions to do what was uh, wrong, even though I knew better, that initial sin was against God. Here, here's something about, in my opinion, he sinned against God prior to the acts themselves because he had sinned in his heart. Uh, and I, I think he's laying that out and establishing the significance of it. And even you can make an argument that uh, in having your eye killed and, and committing adultery with Bathsheba, all of those were were God's creation and therefore in essence even when he sinned against them he, he sinned against God as well and so yeah, there's a lot of interpretation um, because I too would say you know, it's obvious that, that was not the only place or person that he had sinned against yeah I don't the only thing that I can surmise from this is is Ultimately, the greatest weight was with God. Mm -hmm. Ultimately. You know, nobody else was going to do anything because he was the king. That's right. Nobody else he's going to answer so, to. Ultimately, the only person for him to answer to was God. And <clears throat> he, he clearly sinned against Uriah. Mm -hmm. he, he, he sinned against Bathsheba mm -hmm. because she didn't really have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean... She may have wanted to go. She may not have wanted to go. The, the, the story doesn't tell us that. Um, there's, there's, we don't have that indication. But we do know that he, he sent for her. And, and, and um, you know, it's a, it's a really um, difficult thing when you read it. You're like, well, what about her? What about him? You know, what about their family? What about the other people involved? But ultimately, God was the one who he had to answer to. He says in verse 5 and 6 he, that I read, verse 6 specifically, he says, But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Um, what, is, what does he mean? <laughs> like, you're supposed to come out telling the truth? You're supposed to come out wise? How, does, how do you learn wisdom in the womb? Um, I'm just curious. I know there's some science here we could talk about. Yeah, and he makes the distinction between the two verses, five and six. He said, I was born a sinner from the moment my mother conceived me, but you desire honesty from the womb. Uh, scripture is very clear. You know, we're born in sin, shaping in iniquity. We've all sinned, fallen short of the, of the glory of God, etc. He says, even though that God desires honesty and integrity, uh, and teaching me wisdom even there. And I think part of that teaching wisdom even in the womb is that, you know, we are born with a conscience. Mm -hmm. You know, something that when we do wrong, there's there's something inside of us that gives us a check. You know, it's like, wait a minute. Well, that's 
that's given to us by God, uh, you know, as as we are even uh, growing and developing. Sure. As a mother, how do you, did your kids come out honest and wise? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that. Um, I don't know. He could even be referring to his childhood. Yeah. You know what he knew. He was taught from the beginning. Yeah. So. You know, there is some science that talks about reading to your child before they're born, you know, the development, you know, reading to them when they're small, really, really young, the development that it has. Um, I, one, I, what I would say is God is, always, what he's after is for us to be wise and honest from the day we're, we're born. But what I would also say is um, our environment at birth has a lot to do with whether we're going to be an honest person or a dishonest Absolutely. person. It, you know, we're shaping that as parents, mm -hmm. uh, whether we're going to be a wise person or an unwise person. You know, it has some impact on it. it, it verse 7 and 8, it says, Purify me from my sins and I will be clean. Watch me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. So he says, give me back my joy. So his joy is gone. How does sin remove our joy? It takes over and the guilt from it you know because I mean I've, one of the reasons that we struggle with our relationship with God when we have sin that is because we haven't um, you know asked him for forgiveness we haven't admitted it to him we haven't asked him to forgive us and we're still carrying the weight and the guilt of it around and it keeps us from you know when our relationship with him is not right nothing's going to be right yeah guilt is a Joy killer. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think anytime we have unresolved conflict, sin would be a type of conflict between us and God. Uh, even in human relationships, mm -hmm. when there's tension, there's unresolved conflict, it creates a barrier uh, in the relationship. It creates distance and yeah. it steals joy. Uh, when I was growing up, we were not allowed to go to the movies. That was one of the things our church taught, just couldn't go to the movies. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, that, that's a whole thing we can talk about some other time. But uh, when I was a junior in high school, um, I went to with some friends on a Sunday afternoon to the movies. And I, like I didn't jump in the shallow end either. We went to see Spring Break, you know, so I jumped right in the deep end with them. And I was supposed to be at church at a um, band practice. Mm -hmm. before church that night and I didn't come and I did come to church because if I had missed church mm -hmm. the reason you know I didn't miss church is because I'm sitting here yeah. um, <laughs> yeah. I understand I, I, I did get to church and my mom was where you're at now I said I fell asleep Tracy my friend he's been here and played the bass for us a couple of times I said I fell asleep on his couch and um, she didn't she didn't say nothing you know it just went on but it was eating at me okay so she probably knew too huh no she, she didn't she might not know where you were but she probably knew you weren't telling I don't, the truth I don't know she knew that was a high probability right. next yeah. morning we got in the car to go to school <laughs> and I sat down in that car and the guilt just <laughs> overwhelmed me uh -huh. I started bawling I mean, she's, like, she's like what is wrong with you and it took me I probably took five minutes for me to get it out because <laughs> I felt like I had uh, sinned against God, the church, my uh, mom and daddy, and I had the line was yes, the clear sin. sin. Mm -hmm. You know, we can have it, and and spring break was probably a sin <laughs> to watch. Mm -hmm. But I don't anyway, know what it was, but I can imagine. I, I hadn't seen it, but I'm pretty sure it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I uh, I I told my I told her I finally got it out, and she said, "Well, we need to go and talk to your dad." And I was like, "Oh, Jesus, mm -hmm. you know," and I went in, and I'm still balling, and. Um, and I'll never forget my dad. It's one of the few times I ever remember it coming off like this. Usually there was other things that went with it. Mm -hmm. He said, "He said I can tell by your reaction you suffered enough. Wow. And uh, he said guilt's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, you're right. And it, it does. It just, it, yeah. it, 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 it was, over, I mean, it, 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 it was, it, it overwhelmed yeah. me to the point. And I know that sounds silly, but, you know, it can, yeah. you know, when, when we do that. It goes on verse... Um, 12 through 15, he says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your 
ways to rebels and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God who saves me. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. Now, I got a really strange question here that I want to ask. This, this passage never mentions the adultery. Mm -hmm. It only mentions the murder. Was the greater sin the adultery or the murder? I think it's hard to separate because that's what led he to the murder. Connected. I mean, otherwise he'd have no motive for doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, in, in sin is sin, and they were certainly connected together. Um, you know, he, he chooses to vocalize here for shedding blood, um, but you can't separate the two of them. And, and I don't think because he didn't name them specifically that we could make an assumption or, or derive from that 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 part was okay, that's understandable, but that part crossed the line. Yeah, I don't think there's any... Um, indication in Scripture that it's... Uh, um, saying the adultery was okay, but there there is some allusion in Scripture that this is the blood that kept him from building the temple. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the fact that he killed everybody; yeah. it was that he killed somebody. Yeah, there 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 is a place uh, I can't recall, but I actually think where it, the text says innocent right blood, and and that certainly would have been the beginning of it. Right. It wasn't that you killed. Somebody, Everybody, or right? Somebody or in specific. context That's of war, right. yeah, you know, I agree. Um, you know, so and and what I would say is about it. Um, some things are resolvable, some things are unresolvable. Mm -hmm. Had he just slept with Bathsheba and she went home, there's a you can resolve the the conflict when you commit murder. There's no, there's no resolution. It's, it's done. It's, it's over. You know, you, you, and I'm not saying one's worse than the other. I'm just saying that there are some things that there is no restitution for. You know, there's some things you can't make right. There's some things you can't fix. When you killed somebody, can't bring them back. That's right. It's done. Um, so he says, "You do not desire sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit." You will not reject a broken and a repentant heart, O oh God. I grew up the, a, a broken and a contract heart would have been the language that I heard used often. Um, what does a broken and repentant heart look like? Well, there's a genuineness to it. Um, you know, if there's a, a broken and repentant heart, you know, that's more than words. That's more than uh, being caught, you know, just trying to move on down the road with it. It it impacts you. Recognize the significance of what you've done, um, both to God and to other people, whatever that sin may look like. Uh, and I think to have genuine repentance, I think it requires a sense of brokenness to some degree. Sure. What does broken, repentant heart look like to you? You know, I think it's the difference between saying that you're sorry for something and wanting to just like that apology is enough and you move on to you seeing a change in somebody's life and the way that they're choosing to do things differently from that point on. And, I, you know, in this case, and probably for us a lot too, we kind of alluded to that, that it, it almost stops your life. You know, if you truly are repentant and sorry for something terrible that you've done and you're carrying that guilt around um, you can't you have a hard time moving on with the rest of your life until this is resolved until you're forgiven yeah I sometimes people ask me what do you want to be called you know you want to be called pastor preacher reverend Steve Stephen whatever and I said typically my response is whatever you're comfortable with that you know that we're all respectful in the relationship. That's that's what I mean. Because there are people who say pastor and they mean it with all respect. There are people who say pastor, you know, and they're just mm -hmm. being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. um, there are other people who 
there are some teenagers in the church that call me stinky, you know, <laughs> um, and that comes from a, a story with my own niece, you know, um, but they're doing it out of respect or term of like, endearment. Uh, yeah, term term of endearment. endearment. That's right. The same is true with I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. There are people we know when they say it, they mean it. Yeah. You know, and then there are other times they, I'm sorry, said they didn't mean anything. Okay. They, you know, they're 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 just trying to say some, some words. Yeah, that some matter. formality. And you know, it's like you know, you tell your brother, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, you're not. No, because the next time you have an opportunity, as soon as I walk out of this room, you're gonna punch him right. <laughs> you know? um, and, and you know, it, there is the the intent that is behind the words when it comes to apologies and forgiveness and and um, asking for forgiveness is as important as the words themselves. Yes. And as a matter of fact, there have been times where I couldn't say, please forgive me. Mm-hmm. I was so broken. Yeah. But my brokenness clearly yeah. showed that's what I was seeking. You know, I've seen people come forward to pray and be so broken like they, they there were no words. Yeah. Right. You know, the, the, but the brokenness signified what they were, what they were after. But then he says, verse nineteen says, "Then you will be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit with burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings." So we go back. First of all, he said, "You don't want an offering," which isn't completely true. The offering's not going to solve the problem. Right. You need to get your relationship right. But then the offerings are still required. And he says, you'll take an offering with the right spirit. What does it mean to offer a sacrifice with the right spirit? Well, obviously this was a uh, part of their worship tradition. Uh, it was things that they, they did. But God was more concerned about him on a personal level in his heart rather than what he was outwardly presenting to him. You know, it's, it's much like coming to church. You can come and sing songs. You can uh, listen to the message but God is much more concerned about what's taking place on the inside of us rather than these outward things that don't mean anything. He's saying get the heart right first, then do this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Cheryl? Yeah, I agree. I think, um, I mean, I guess an example I could give is like a volunteer position. If if you have somebody, especially working in the back with the kids, who's just doing it because they were told to or because they feel like they have to, as opposed to somebody who's doing it with the heart of really wanting um, you know, to serve the kids and the families in the church, you're going to get two totally different experiences from those people because if you're doing it out of obligation, it's just like giving money to the church. I don't really think God wants that. Yeah. So, is he going to take it? Down? No, I was going to say, <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, we, we do, we do. The, Lord, the Lord may not I, be pleased yeah. with it, but... But yes, we we yes, I didn't we say you don't we, 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 That's right. We we'll intercede on your behalf. God can see their heart. Yeah. Well, he can see right. their wallet. <laughs> there um what I would say is when it comes to working with people, you use the word volunteer, maybe staff, whatever, ultimately what you want is high skill and great attitude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you if I have to choose one, I would re- I'll take attitude. Mm-hmm. every time because mm-hmm. skill can be taught it may be slow it may uh, never be it fantastic may plateau, mm-hmm. you know, be, that's right that's right you may hit a you may hit a ceiling but attitude is a choice you can't mm-hmm. you can't teach attitude you can teach skill and you know when it comes to to offering to God you know some people can offer a small offering some people can offer a big offering some people can have great skills, some people have minimal skill, but the spirit that we do it with is what he's after. And um, if we're doing it with the right spirit, that, that, that matters. And I think that that's important to God. It doesn't mean, well, I've got a good attitude, I don't have to offer much. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that, yeah. that's, that's not true. Um, but the, the attitude with whatever we offer it with is, is a difference maker. Yep. If you have a good attitude, you're probably going to offer more. Yeah, you're going to. Do, that's right. You're going to. You're going to give every bit of your effort. Mm-hmm. That's right. All right. Anything else y'all wanted to cover in this passage? Yeah. Okay. Jay, you want to close us in prayer? Sure. Lord, we thank you again uh, for our time in your Word, and uh, as David 
did here. May we be open and honest about our sins uh, and our failures and our faults toward you. And may we recognize that you desire us to have a clean and a pure heart before you, even more than the external things that we sometimes seem to offer you or go through the motions and traditions of what we would classify as worship. Lord, and as our hearts are purified before you, then our worship means something uh, to you. And uh, we're grateful that you love us enough not to leave us where we are, but to teach us these truths. And may we apply them to our lives daily in Jesus' name. Amen.